It's noisy, so I'm going to ask you to be quiet. Open your Bible to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. We've got a, a lot of folks in here this morning. And uh, that's good. That's good. Acts chapter 7. Everybody look in your Bibles, please. We'll not wait any longer. Just get right into Scripture. Acts chapter 7. Look at the last part of the book of Acts chapter 7. And I'm going to bring you a message from this thought this morning. A a simple message, but it's something I hope that you'll get. And I believe it's what the Lord laid on my heart. And for you that um, I preached a message along these lines about three years ago here, but we got about a hundred new people in here this morning that need to hear this. And so everybody give me attention, please. Acts chapter 7, verse number 55. Acts chapter 7, verse number 55. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, this is Stephen, the great preaching deacon here, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. That means they all ganged up on him. They didn't have a Honda and run over him with it. Verse 58. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. That's Stephen call on God, not them, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Notice the last words Stephen ever said. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge, and he died. I want to preach this morning on the subject, epitaphs that God wrote. The Holy Spirit recorded here in the Bible the last words of this man, Stephen. The last word this man ever said was, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. He died. Years ago, back in the old days, they don't do it anymore, but they had tombstones. Most graveyards now just have flat stones where you can mow over them easy. But years ago, they, they'd they set the tombstone up. Some of them be as big as this pulpit. Bigger even. Monuments. They would say, and when a person died, they would put on there what they call an epitaph. I've got a bunch of these at home. Famous epitaphs of different people. An epitaph means two words. epi. Taph, it's it's Greek words, epi means upon, upon, and taph means tomb, upon the tomb. So when when an epitaph, somebody said, uh, what are you going to have on your epitaph? They mean they're going to write something on your tombstone. And what they did back then, you can still go visit a lot of graveyards, they wrote what summed up a person's life on their tombstone, or their last words. You know, like Grandma, the last word she ever said was, meet me in heaven or something. They'll have that thing engraved on her, on her headstone or tombstone. And every time you go visit Mama's grave, you'll see them words, meet me in heaven. It sums up their life. And uh, what I want to do this morning is take a little trip through the Bible. We won't be able to visit all of them. But in the Bible, there's a great big graveyard. And there's thousands upon thousands of people buried there. And we can walk through them this morning and see what God said about somebody after they died. Now, uh, people are made famous a lot of times for the last things they ever say. Uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, uh, sometimes people's last words, people remember them by their last words. You've heard them famous last words. We say them all the time when we was little. Uh, going around, people make jokes, famous last words, you know. Famous last words like um, uh, Tarzan. You know what famous... Tarzan's famous last words was, don't you? Somebody tell me. 
That's it. Who grieves the grapevine? That's the last thing he ever said. Uh, that, and, and nobody ever heard anything melt him. Like it's like somebody come around, uh, somebody come around and said, "Look out for that clothes line, 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 line. like that." Last thing they ever said. Or look out for that light bulb, something like that. Uh, or it's the famous words that people say right before they die. And boy, I'm telling you what, I, I heard about this preacher one time, and he's preaching a sermon, he's an old, old preacher. And he come around like this, the pulpit, and he said, I have just one more point to make, and fell over dead. Like that. And boy, he, I reckon he made that point in heaven, but that's the last thing he said, boy. I, I, I have just one more. How would you like for the last thing you said to be, I hate you, you know, or, or you know, or I wish I'd never met you, or you, I wish you'd die, or something like that? Wouldn't that be awful? Right? People are remembered for the last thing they ever said. I read in a book of mine, uh, it said like somebody like Joan Rivers. Y'all know who Joan Rivers is. She's that woman that looks like a prune with blonde hair. And uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, they, they had her on there, and she said, she said, uh, on her tombstone, she wants, wait, can we talk? That's what she wants. But it ain't gonna happen. She ain't gonna have no conversation with God. And boy, I tell you, that lady's in trouble when she meets the Lord. Uh, like when Danny Thomas died, they put on his tombstone, make room for daddy, his TV show. And, you know, people, they, they summarize your life like, like that. Uh, I, I read about this, uh, man, and uh, and she was always sick. You ever met these? You ever met these ladies? It's always sick. And I'm I'm not being critical or ugly because some of them really are. But I'm telling you, they can't be that sick and still be alive. I mean, everything you've got, they've got. I talked to somebody one time. And I said, uh, you know, son, son. I said, her back's hurting. Lord, mine's been a killing me. And I said, uh, I said, uh, well, you know, they, some of them got sugar. Up. My sugar's up too, preacher. Now, it don't matter what you've got; they've got it, and worse. You ever met anybody like that? I'm telling you, I, they got every disease, back trouble. I mean, ingrown toenails, uh, migraine, headaches. I don't care, bladder infection. I mean. And other stuff, bad stuff. I mean, and you name it, they've got it. Well, this woman, she was like that, you know, and, and, uh, it didn't matter what you had, she had. And she went to the doctor, and the, and the nurse was examining her, and they said, you had it? Yep. Yeah. Checked every one of them little boxes. Everything, high blood pressure, cholesterol. <laughs> I mean, checked, checked every one of them like that. And finally, the nurse thought, Lord, there ain't nobody can be that sick and still be living. So she thought, I'll just make up something. She said, well, do your teeth itch. And that old woman said, you know, come to think of it. <laughs> uh, now I got to see. Uh, she just liked that. And they said she finally died. And when she died, she had it put on her tombstone. I told you I was sick. That was the last thing thing anybody ever heard of her. Well, wouldn't that be awful? That'd be an awful thing to say. I don't know. When I die, I hope you can put something good on my tombstone. I know what I'd like. And I hope my life characterizes that. And once in a while, I have somebody come up to me. And they say, Brother Danny. Uh, when I die, I want you to preach my funeral. And I say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I say, why? I've been a member here for a long time. You're supposed to love me. I do love you. Will you preach my funeral? Nope, can't do it. And they say, why? How could you say that? And I said, you, I can't do it. And they say, why? It's one of them trick answers, you know, that preachers give. Like, when they come in and say, say grace, you say, grace, you know, like that. Just helping them get straightened out in their thinking. And, uh, they, they, she said, well, why don't you preach my funeral? And I said, because you are preaching your funeral every day you live. And you are. You are. When you lay up here in front of this church or some other church, people have already got their mind made up how they think about you. And brother, well, they might, they, they size you up. By the life that you live. And God wrote some of these things in the Bible. And the preacher can get up and brag on you. I mean, I have to preach funerals. I know how it is. I mean, it's awful. Uh, uh, sometimes you, you have to try your best to figure out something good to say about somebody. I mean, surely they've done something good. And the preacher, they expect you to do that. They expect you to get up and tell everybody what a fine fellow he was. And he done this and he done that. And one time, long time ago, he gave $10 to the Red Cross. And, and he, surely he's in heaven. <laughs> you know, you expect you to do that. I got this one funeral one time. The preacher was up preaching. And he's bragging on this guy, and bragging on this guy, and bragging on this guy. I told you the other day, and and boy, everybody's looking at each other like what? And about halfway through it, the mama punched the son and said, "Go up there and look and see if that's your daddy in that thing." 
<laughs> we went into the wrong room here, you know, and this funeral home got in the wrong funeral. But anyway, people will remember. I'll never forget that story I heard that time about this fellow. And he said he was a uh, last words he ever said. And they said this preacher, this preacher, his church wanted to do something real special for him. And as always, you know, buy him a new suit or buy him something like that, that you know. But they wanted to do something special for him. So all the men got together and they met and said, let's do something for our pastor. They went, he liked horses. And they went and bought him a riding horse. And boy, they bought that thing to him. And they said, preacher, there it is. Isn't she a beaut? He said, she sure is, man. I can't wait to ride it. What's its name? They told him a name. They said, preacher. They said, now wait a minute. Now before you get on this horse? They said, you remember, this is a special train horse. They said, uh, they said now listen, this horse, he, he, when, you get, when, when you want him to go, you don't say giddy up. Uh, uh, you say, praise the Lord. He said, no, nah, you, you ain't telling the truth. They said, that's right. You say, praise the Lord, he'll take off. And, and, and then whenever you want him to stop, you don't say, whoa! You say, Amen. They said he's a special trained preacher horse. said, when you want him to stop, just say, Amen. He'll stop just like that. He said, I don't believe that. And he said, well, we'll try it. Well, he got on there and got all fixed up and got his boots in there, you know, and got his hat on. And he said, all right, giddy up. Let's go. Kick. And it didn't do nothing. That horse just stood there. And he said, oh, oh, yeah, okay, okay, wait a minute now. Now, now praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, I got it. And uh, uh, he said, Praise the Lord, that thing took off like that, boy. I mean, he went around across the countryside doing 90 miles an hour. It got faster and faster. He was, woo! He was having a time. He was running around, and he got started getting scared. Started running across around these cliffs. And that horse ain't even never been there before. And he went and said, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, boy. Whoa! Whoa, you fool. You're going to kill him. Stop! Whoa! And he got to him, what'd he say? 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 And, and just in the nick of time, he said, Amen! That was like, ah! Right down the edge of that cliff. He watched and says, Praise the Lord. <laughs> now it's gone, man. That was the last thing he ever said. <laughs> That'd be awful, wouldn't it? That'd be awful. That'd be, I wouldn't want to go like that off a cliff on a horse. But I will tell you one thing, brother. People remember you by what you say. People remember you by how you live. People remember the words that come out of your mouth. And God, in the Bible here, He's wrote some epitaphs. I say, well, right quick, let me tell you this one. I like this story. So this old woman, she she lived in, and she went to this church, and she never got married. Old maid, that's what they call that. And uh, and that's not so bad, ladies. I'd rather be an old maid than wish I was one. Amen. There's a lot of them like that. I'd rather be single and look for a man all day than get married and have to look for him all night. There's a lot of them doing that too. But anyway, this old maid, she, she never did do nothing. She never did nothing wrong. She never did nothing right. She just sat there. Every servant just sat there her whole life. She never made a mark for God. Never made a mark for the devil. Never done nothing. Never. And this preacher loved baseball. I'm telling you, he loved baseball. He was a baseball fanatic. I'm telling you, he, he never preached a sermon without at least mentioning baseball. Let me show him that new baby. Turn around there, Kim. Brand new baby. Look the hair on that young one. Because it's a Cherokee. Amen. I'm like, go ahead. And uh, anyway, uh, that thing, that woman died. And the preacher, he always preached about baseball. Always. Baseball, 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 baseball. He knowed the Yankees. He knowed who won the World Series every year. He knowed who was the coach. He knowed, And they said he never preached without somehow or another working in a baseball illustration or somehow or another. He'd do it. And it, and it come past that old woman died. And everybody's sitting there at her funeral. And these two women are sitting there. And she punched her butt. And she said, I bet he don't say nothing about baseball this time. She said, I bet he does too. I ain't never heard him preach one time if he didn't say something about baseball. She said, he won't. What can he say? This is a funeral. That old woman, she never even knew it went to a ball game. She said, I'll tell you one thing. I ain't never heard that guy preach one time that he didn't mention baseball. She said, well, well, I guess we'll see. He got up there and he started preaching. He started and waxed eloquent, you know, and he got up there and got in the, in the groove, you know, when he's preaching. And boy, about that time, here it comes. And he said, here lies the bones of Mary Jones. For her, death hell no terrors. She lived an old maid. She died an old maid. No hits, no runs, and no errors. <laughs> and I got, <laughs> I thought about that, brother. That means she didn't do nothing good. She didn't do nothing bad. She never left a mark. Nobody ever remembered nothing good that woman done. And ladies and gentlemen, that's on her record. I made up my mind. 
And you can tell them this when I'm gone. I made up my mind by the grace of God. I am not just going to float through life and not make a difference in this world. When I'm gone, I want my footprint left somewhere. I have a footprint here where somebody going to say, that boy done been here and gone. I got a letter from a preacher one day from South Carolina down around Gaffney. And he said, thank you for coming here preaching. You left your footprint. And I said, praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, people, we only get one life. We only get one one shot, let's make a difference and do something that God could say about us after we're dead and gone. Amen? Amen. Now let me give you these right quick. I didn't mean to take that much time. But right quickly, let me, tell you, let me show you some people in the Bible. There's some people in the Bible that God wrote their epitaph. There's a bunch of them. I ain't got time to give them all to you. There's one in Acts chapter 9, and there's a lady. This lady in Acts chapter 9 was named Dorcas. And the Bible said about this lady, the Bible says, we have a young lady here this morning named Dorcas, the only one I've ever met in the flesh. But uh, this lady here in the Bible was named Dorcas. And you know what she, the Bible said about her? The Bible said, you know what it said about her? The Bible said that she was full of good works. What about that, ladies? Amen? Uh, she, she died and God said about her, she was full of good works. She was full of good works. That's what God would have put on her tombstone. Ladies, if you died this week, and we said, Lord, what about old so-and-so? Now, we, you know how we'd do. We'd smooth it over for you. We'd say, she was a good old soul. she come to church when it wasn't raining, and, and, and it was Easter, and, and she made it for the preaching service once in a while. But the Lord don't do that. You know what God said about this woman? She was full of good works. Let me give you a suggestion, ladies. All you ladies listening? One lady told me one time, she said, now, now preacher, the reason I watch them old soap operas is because I'm bored. And I said, really? I said, uh, being bored is worse than seeing than watching them. A Christian ain't supposed to even know what bored me, I don't even know what the board. I don't have. I don't even know what bored means. The only time I've ever been bored since I've been saved when I had to go to a Lamaze class, and or, or had to sit and, and watch golf on TV or something. But other than that, I don't even know what the word bored means. That's. I, I'm telling you, brother. I've all. I've got a stack of books at home that I could be reading. I've got people all over the country that want me to call them, talk to them on the phone. I've got soul winning I need to do. I've got visitation. I've got. I'm. I can bounce a basketball. I can. I can sit down and write a song or sing it or something. We don't never need to be bored as child of God. Amen. Anybody call me this morning? You want to do something for the Lord? This ain't for the Dorcases, but this is for the men. You men want to do something for the Lord? A friend of mine called me this morning. He said, Danny, if you got anybody up there that's got a truck that can pull a trailer, he said, I've got Bibles and supplies and stuff to go to the victims down in New Orleans. He said, I'll pay them to get a trailer, a truck, come to Florida, drive that thing up here to Asheville because we're helping Ralph Sexton. And them over there, they got that Hearts with Hands ministry. And Ralph and them sending tractor and trailer loads of stuff down there to New Orleans and helping people out. He's got a truck load of Bibles in Florida. He said, come to Florida to get it, take it up there, put it on their tractor and trailer, and they'll take it to... to uh, so, see, there's always something you can do. You can do something. This lady, I said, well, why do you watch them so far? She said, well, Danny, I don't really watch them. She said, I just like to look at their clothes. She said, you know, they wear pretty clothes on there. They do. <laughs> they wear not much clothes on there sometimes too. Uh, I think it ain't all the clothes she's going to look at. Boy, y'all getting quiet in here this morning. As the stomach turns, still come on. Uh, listen, listen, man. Hey, hear me now. Listen, you ladies, let me give you an idea. Okay, you ready? Listen. Number one, write this down. Go to store. Got that? Go to store. Go down aisle with fruit. Got that? Now I'm going to teach you something. I'm going to teach you how to get a blessing from God. You go down there and pick up some oranges, pick up some apples, some grapes, some nuts, some stuff like that. Then you put that in your basket and you pay for it. And oh, oh, oh before you go to the grocery store, go down that aisle. It's got 
thin pole and stuff and buy some of that saran wrap. Buy a big old thing of it. Then you take that home. You go to the closet and pull out your kids' Easter baskets. Take all the Easter stuff off of them. They've got that green looking stuff. Looks like grass and then you cram it down in there and you stick these, these, these apples and oranges and bananas and pile it real pretty on there. Do two of them. All right, now is that too hard? Can, do I need to repeat any of this? You have to go slow with stuff like this because people don't know how to do this, evidently. And you take that and you take that saran wrap and wrap it around it. Then you put it in the back seat of your car. Then you call your buddy who also is bored and such a home watching soap operas all day and say, would you like to do something for Jesus? And she said, what? They ain't nothing to do. And, say, and you'll say, I'll come over and get you. And then you come over and pick her up and you drive down the road and you drive down the road. Then you go to a rest home. Does anybody in here know where a rest home is? Raise your hand if you know where. Okay, now. Now we're learning. We're learning, class. We're learning. Pay attention. Right here, boys and girls. Right here. Now what? And, and, and look here. You take, this, you take these baskets and you go down the hall of the rest home. Now I hate to sound like I'm teaching about the kids, but evidently people don't even think. And boy, I tell you, you, go down the hall. I went to one yesterday evening. And I walked down that hall. And then there's an old woman standing there in a wheelchair. And she went, Ian! I went, I said, yeah. And she's, she's grabbing at my arm. And went, yeah, yeah. I went, yeah. And I don't mean to be funny, but man, I'm telling you, she's scared. She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, that's right. She said, yeah, I know it. Her things is bad everywhere. And, and I said, I'll be praying for you. And when I have no idea what she was saying. But I think she was in bad shape. But I went down through there, and I was walking down through there like this, and you look and you see them. And there lays one in there. And I tell you, you say, how do I know which room to go to? You keep walking till you see a room that ain't got no stuff like on bulletin board, no cards, no pictures. There's people in there that don't ever, ever have nobody to talk to them. Their family won't even come see them. And you can see them. How would you like to be laying in there like that? And you take one of them baskets. And you walk in there and say, Hi, I'm so-and-so from Shining Light Baptist Church in Morganton. And I just want to come and cheer you up. See, that's what it said about Dorcas. She was full of good works. When she died, that's what was on her tombstone. God said, full of good works. And by the time you leave that room... There'll be a big old tear coming down that lady's face. She might be a millionaire and leaving. You might be rich, man. That has happened before. You go now, won't you? Boy, you got a burden all of a sudden. Listen, there are people like that. I heard about a preacher. There was an old, an old woman in a rest home like that, and he just went and held her hand and played with her every once in a while, and she died and left him millions of dollars. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. But you say, I'm bored, preacher. Listen, if you want God, say something good about you when you die. Get with it, brother. Get out of here Saturday and help us go visit them bus routes. Listen, that in a church this size, that is no reason we should ever be short on bus workers. It's just laziness and the pure devil that cheats us out of doing something for God. Let God say something good about you when you're gone. Say amen. I ain't got time to tell you all these. What about Noah? You know what the Bible says about Noah? We walk by Noah's casket. I don't know what by his casket. And you look and it says, And Noah walked with God. That is a compliment. I wish the Lord would say that about me. I don't know if he would or not. But I wish he would. I remember when I first got saved, I read that Enoch walked with God, and I read that Noah walked with God, and I used to think, man, them guys must have been holy. And then I read in the Bible where it says, all of sin comes short of the glory of God. There's a sinner just like me and you. Noah got drunk one time. Lot committed incest. I mean, he was some wicked guys, but the Bible said they walked with him. Would you say a man committed incest with his own kids, walked with God? No, you wouldn't. You, you say that dirty dog needs to be in hell. That's right, he does. Just the same place me and you need to be. Would you say a man that got drunk after God delivered him from the flood ought to be in a uh, walk with God? No, but no idea. But God said after he died, he walked with God. See, if you'd have been right, you'd have said, he got drunk. He's wicked, but God said he walked with him. You know why? 
Because God looks at that man's heart. And let me tell you something, people. I, I searched my Bible and I thought, well, if I want to walk with God, how do I walk with God? And you know what the Bible says? Can two walk together except they be, tell me, agreed? You know what you got to do to walk with God? Agree with Him. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. Put it down on your record book. I ain't always been in a thing I should be, and maybe won't be till I get to heaven. But I'm going to tell you this morning, I agree with everything God said in this Bible right here. If He says it, I agree with it. And that's how you walk with God. Agree with Him. See, you walk like this, Enoch and the Lord, Noah and the Lord. The Lord says, I've been in the mountains out over there. You like him? And Noah said, Amen. Perfect. Kept walking. And the Lord said, I made the ocean that can only come so far. And Noah said, Wonderful. God, I agree with you. And God said, I'm going to drown the whole world with a flood because I won't repent. And Noah said, Amen. Just give me some grace. See, Noah walked with God because Noah agreed with God. The reason some of you can't walk with God, you disagree with Him. You're fighting trying to have your own way. You're trying to work something out that ain't right and make it right and you ain't going to walk with God when He's going one way and you're going the other way. If God's walking this way and you walk, that's why the world walks one way. That's why the people on talk shows and the people out there in the world, they cannot walk with God because they disagree with Him. God says, what do you think about homosexuality? And Noah said, well, I saw a special on TV the other day, and they went back and they traced it where the people were born that way. And God said, see you. And kept walking. Noah stayed back there. And Noah said, wait, Lord, wait on me. The Lord said, you're walking me. Why? Because you don't agree with me. Okay, okay, I forget what they said. You're right. It's a sin. It's an abomination. The Lord said, okay, come on. The Lord says, they think about capital punishment. And he says, you know... Professors done a survey at the University of Overtime, Berkeley, California, and they said that it's not a deterrent to crime. And I'm not sure how I feel about capital punishment. And the Lord said, bye. He said, wait, Lord! And the Lord said, you ain't walking with me, you don't agree with me. Let me tell you something, people. The way you walk with God is everything you read in that book, you say, amen. If it cuts my head off, amen anyway. If it's against me, it's right, I know. Amen. And brother, listen, when I die, if I die, I ain't planning on it, but if I do, and brother, y'all roll me in here, or whatever you decide to do, put a big video of me up here preaching, warning you, hey man, this, I shell in the corn. And boy, I'll tell you what, when I die, I don't want my girls back there this morning to have to walk around my casket saying, well, you know, I never seen daddy pray or read his Bible or nothing. I, I really don't know where my daddy's at. Heaven, hell, Georgia, or wherever he's at. Hey, listen, brother, hey, listen, yeah, I don't want them to think that. When you die, you want your family to say, you owe it, you owe it to your family. You owe it to your family to live your life in a way so that they don't have to wonder where you're at when you're dead and gone. Did your kids ever see you pray? Did they ever see you pray? Did they ever walk in when you're reading your Bible? You ever got down beside the bed at night and grabbed a hold of your arm? You want God to say something good about you after you go? Get with it, brother. I had a bunch more this morning, but I'm going to tell you one that I'm through. There's another one. Demas in 2 Timothy 3, 4 said, you know what God said about him? He loved this present world. Boy, what would, what would if you, some of you died right now, that's what God would write on your tombstone. You love the world. You love this, you love sports, you love recreation, you love this, you love all that stuff, and there ain't nothing wrong with that in the right place. But you know what I'm talking about. Second Peter two, the Bible said about these men, they forsook the right way. You know what I said about Judas in Matthew twenty six and verse twenty five? He betrayed him. We are walking through the Bible graveyard this morning. Look somebody said, Oh look, Judas Iscariot. Ooh, what does it say about him? He was a disciple. He was a he was a miracle worker. No, he betrayed him. Are you a traitor? A traitor. You say, "Well, brother, anything's have happened in my life." Well, get over it. Get over it. 
Get your heart in there and serve God like a man or like a woman ought to. Quit crying. Quit sucking your thumb. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. We all have problems. The devil fights all of us. Get on fire for God. Get back in there. Rededicate your life. Swallow your pride. Get on fire for God like you need to be. Jezebel, imagine God writing your epitaph. It doesn't matter what a preacher says at your funeral. It's what God knows about you. And He sums up your life. Let's stand with our heads bowed. And we head-